All right. Good evening, everybody, or maybe for most of you at this point. Good morning. Um, so here's another video. This is, like I mentioned in the last video, this is a continuation of today's lectures, November 9th. This video will only cover Dr. El Salanti's I lectures. Um, so if you missed Dr. Nally's and Dr. Scott's lectures this morning, I believe they are on yesterday's video. So 11-8. Um, this was just Dr. El Salanti's because it took me more time than expected to get through his lectures um, and find cards. So we're going to get started and dive right into it. Um, and so we are going to go into um, step one, version 11, first aid, um, down into neuro. Um and we want to go straight into A and P, and I believe we want to go, yep, into brainstem here. And I just want to go over this again. I activated a couple. You might find them helpful. Um, not those ones. Nope. Nope, nope. It's in here. Yeah, so you might find some of these helpful. You might not. It's totally up to you. Um, it's going over where... Like the location, like the spatial location of certain parts of the brain. So you have like the medial longitudinal, fas medial, ugh, can't even speak at this point in the day. Medial longitudinal fasciculus. If this, yeah, that word right over here. <laughs> um, this card's going over that location, and then uh, this one is identifying the region of the brain. So it's just really getting to know your spatial awareness. You don't have to do it if you don't want. Um, totally up to you. But there was also the first card on this last section, so activated. Same as for the pawns here. The first two, um, you should hopefully actually have this one activated. Um, but then the second one and the last one, same with the medulla here, the first three, that one. Um, the rostral midbrain, you should have more of these. And we'll get into that later. But you could start by making sure everything you see on this screen is activated. So the first four, skip one, two, and then the last three. And then and rostral pawns, just this one here. So that is it for that section. And then we're just going to dive straight into ophthalmology. Um, I want to go to normal eye and anatomy first. Fundoscopy, grab all of it. It's great to know it. If you really know it and you think you do, you can maybe skip out on these cards. But I know I definitely had some questions when Dr. El Salanti was going over it. So this is just good. Just, just get in your repetition. Histology, all of it, except for a couple. So the ones you can click through if you don't want to count down. Um, going over the like the position of retinal, we don't need to know that, um, whether it's in cis or trans. And then there's the third one here. That's not key. Everything else is. Everything else is super good. And then identification, make sure you have these unlocked here. All right. Then we're gonna jump down to aqueous humor pathway. And it's not all of them here. Um, Cause lot, so this is talking about drugs, the ones I don't have activated. So I would start from the bottom, do the first three from the bottom, skip three going up, then two, skip two, then two more. Those are the ones that follow the learning objectives and what was reviewed in the lecture. Uh, and then down to pupillary control Accommodation, ciliary reflex, do these bottom three. I think you should already have these activated, but just to be sure. Uh, then we're going into the Edinger Westfall nucleus, all of them. Make sure all of those are activated. They're all great. Um, the light reflex and pupillary sphincter muscle, do all of them. And then you can skip this one because we don't need to know the receptor. So all of them activated except the third. Okay. And then... This last one, <clears throat> first one, do not need. Second, third, yes. Fourth, fifth, nope. And then the rest. So follow it like so. These ones, they're a little, it's not a key takeaway, but it's really good to know the sympathetic pathway. It's really helpful to know the, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic pathways as they come up from, I believe, C8, T1, spinal levels and they come up through the spine and innervate a number of things um, before going back down into the spine. I think that's how that works, I think. 
could be wrong. I had it explained to me today by a faculty member, and then I did the lectures. It's the way I understand it in the moment. I could be completely wrong. And it, you should probably do these cards, and I need to do them as well, obviously, because um, I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, you do have to know the pathways, though. Know the parasympathetic, parasympathetic and sympathetic pathways through the head. Um, and then we're going to go down to 22, and we're going to update. No. This one. Yeah. Grab these first two. These two first two, I think, are helpful for understanding. For one, where the where the um, nucleus is, and then this one is helpful to understand how lesions to cranial nerve four will affect someone's vision. So if you don't, if you lose cranial nerve four, you lose superior oblique. If you lose superior oblique, you can't look down. So you can't see where you're walking. So that's helpful to a helpful card to understand. I think what a lot of questions are going to be like from Dr. El Salante. He teaches you the anatomy, the physiology, but then he had a lot of clinical correlations. So like a lot of lesions, a lot of, if you knock this out, what happens? So I think this would be a great one to get besides so just one card. You can fit it into the few extra thousand. So not much, right? <laughs> um, and we're going to go down to 23. This one's super good. I want to split up between the two. So physiology, come down to this card here. I believe it's C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th, 7th. Make sure it's the 7th. Yep. Anyways, just make sure your arrow's here. Skip all these um, C2, C3s. Come down here. Get the rest. These are all solid. All solid. Um, solid cards. Running into defects. You don't need all of them here. I want to make that very clear. A lot of them. You get way out of context. You get into the terms, the information that Dr. El Salanti said that we didn't need to know. Like it was just way, like he made a, drew a line, didn't want to go too detailed. So I am catering my studying to that unless it's really helpful to understand. Otherwise, staying here. So the cards you want to activate are this one. So I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventh card, yeah. Seventh card down, skip one, activate another, skip one, activate three, okay? I'll go to all of them so you can read them here on the right. Okay, those ones, those are all good. Um, and that is it for that section. And then we're gonna go into 25. And 25, there's a lot. So activate all the symptoms here in 25. And I want to go over what internuclear ophthalmoplegia is. It is a it is the site like the, the medical diagnosis for a lesion in the brain that's affecting vision. Um, so that's really helpful to know. And it or like and it's referring specifically to like the pathway of cranial nerve, yeah, the nerve roots of uh, cranial nerves three and six. Um, and so not all of these cards kind of match the same thought process that Dr. El Salanti was along thinking of, um, but it's pretty close. And I think if you like, you really sit here and look at the card and compare it to what Dr. El Salanti says, you, like it'll really key in for you. Um, so like this one is internuclear ophthalmo ophthalmoplegia results in inability to adduct the ipsy lateral eye. Okay. So if you're thinking about that, um, you're thinking about which, like if where's the problem at referring to the same eye. So, and if you can't adduct, you're thinking of cranial nerve three. So you're losing adduction because adduction or on the same side, you're losing uh, medial rectus. And so I just put a little note here that this, this is referring to the medial, the, M the MLF. I don't know. I mean, it, this made much more sense earlier in the day. It is just too late for me, for my brain to work. Um, but trust me, if you look up the definition of ophthalmoplegia, think about what Dr. Al Salanti went through. This, These are the cards explaining the horizontal um, gaze palsies. Really good. Um, going down to the medial longitudinal fiscus. Yeah, that word. Skip the first three of five. Wow. Need to get me done for tonight. Um, skip the first five. Come down, activate these good ones. I'll just click through them here so you can read on the right. Um, these are all very good. I was trying to be super 
picky with these. Um, yeah, those are all good. And then coming down to the bottom, not the last one, this one, skip one, come up, that one, all super good. And um, uh, one thing else I wanted to say, so a lot of these other cards, they're referring to the PPRF, the Paramedian Pontine Reticular Formation. Dr. El Salanti did mention this, but he did not go into detail. He actually pointed it out and he was about to talk about it, I think. And then he said, nope, you don't need to know it. I'm not going to go into detail. So I didn't go into detail, but I want to let you know that these cards are here in case that would help for your retention and understanding of the pathway. So the PPRF cards, they're all in here. Like just, you, you can click through and it relates the PPRF as it relates to the um, MLF, as well as the rest of that sympathetic innervation. So that is there for you to want, but it is not in the learning, objective, learning objectives. Um, so it's not completely necessary. Um, and I think you could get by without it. Last thing, come up to your search bar, empty it, just completely empty it. Type in strabismus, okay? Just like that, hit enter. First card pops up, this one. This is the one you want, okay? This is helpful. I couldn't find any more on it that was actually related to what we needed to know and the amount of detail that we needed to know it. So it's kind of an odd way to search for something, but that's where you can find it. And that is it. Um, so not a ton of cards from Dr. El Salanti's videos, but I think some key ones to at least keep that information fresh in your head. Um, but definitely go back to the lectures, continue studying in other ways that you f all find beneficial. Um, I would definitely, yeah, di make sure you have a diverse um, study plan. I think that's really going to help you overall because you're going to keep testing your brain in different ways. Um, so I think you can learn the information a lot better by approaching it from different angles per se. Um, last thing I wanted to say is if, if you've been keeping up with my Anki, I know it's been a lot of cards. Like, trust me, I know. Like I could, this is the end of the week here and I still have 542 new cards to get through. So that is a lot. I hear you. And I mean, this, these first two weeks have been kind of a lot, but I just want to show you here that I, so like last week I ended with almost four, 500 cards on Friday, then like almost thousand and then 813, 527, 527, 826. Today's 551, 61. I'm not doing, but by keeping up on these cards and then adding the more on the weekend, I am able to and yeah, it may take you longer to do this. I'll address the timing in a second, but I want to let you know that this is totally doable. Um, so you have, like, if you look at my tomorrow, I have 267 cards. To, I'll get a hundred new ones plus these 61. So plus 160, that would be my tomorrow. Oop. If I didn't activate new cards, I'm going to activate all the new cards and get through it. So that way my next Monday where it says 262, I'll probably be walking in, Oh, what did my Monday here say? 527. That's probably maybe less is what my Monday is going to be like for next week. So it is a lot of information, especially the anatomy. It's a lot, but you can do it. It's doable. And you still have other time. Like I was done with lectures, activating cards and getting stuff done by five today. So I could take it. You could have taken, like I could have taken a break and gone back to studying. I had other stuff to do, so I didn't, but like, this is totally doable. And if you keep up with it, I just want to promise you it pays off. Um, if it, it, it's, if Anki works for you, if Anki is a, a good study resource, stick with it. If it's not, don't force yourself to use this. Secondly, your timing per card does not have to be this fast. If you're like 10, 12 seconds, even like 14, 16 seconds a card, that's great. As long as you are getting the information down, that's great. So all that matters at the end of the day is that you are hitting that third key, the like the good button. If you are hitting that versus hitting hard on every single one, you're making progress no matter how long it takes you. Um, so with that being said, I will leave you to activating the cards and getting back to this super fun block. That was not sarcasm. It's genuine. Really, really enjoying this. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Um, happy studying, everyone. Enjoy the long weekend. Maybe consider taking a day off, you know, refill that battery of yours and looking forward to, I guess, another week, third week. All right.
Cheers.